Welcome to this screencast on BitLocker to Go for Windows 7. And I want to start by showing you some group policy options that relate to BitLocker. So I'm just going to apply a filter to group policy for anything that contains BitLocker. And you can see here that under BitLocker we've got settings that apply just to fixed drives, settings that apply to the operating system drive, and settings that we're interested in for removable drives and you can see there's an option to prevent people writing to unprotected drives. We can also control the uh, preservation of the recovery key and on this machine group policy has actually set this option remotely to store the key in an active directory directory service. You can see I'm not connected to a network here so I've got no active directory access but I'm going to try and create an encrypted flash drive. So before I actually go to my uh, USB stick I'm just going to have a look at the hard disk and you can see there's an option here to turn on BitLocker which has the admin shield next to it. Don't get that for the USB key because that uh, is an operation anybody can do. There's a quick bit of initialization which we've speeded up here and then I can either select a smart card or I can type in a password and we'll speed that up too. And having put the password in, we need to save the recovery key for this disk. And you'll notice there's an option at the bottom that says it's managed by the system administrator. But I'm just going to say save it to a file on my machine as well. That's the GUID that identifies this device. And I'm ready to encrypt now. So I get some information, start encrypting, but because I can't save the key to Active Directory, it fails at this point. So I'm going to plug my network connection in, and we'll just see the network appear down on the system tray there. And once we've got a working network, and it looks like we have, I'm just going to do the same thing again. And to save you watching me go through the same process, we're just going to edit the video here and spin things forward uh, to the point of saving the recovery key and now I can start encrypting and this time the encryption begins properly and you'll see a dialog box appear in a second giving encryption progress and again this is a process that takes several minutes so we've speeded this up for you uh, but at the end of the process you can see we just get to the end of the progress bar and we get a message saying the encryption's complete. So having just encrypted this drive, there's no need to put a password in. You can see that there are some pictures on here. And if I pop the drive out and put it back in again, you see that I need to put in my password. Um, I get some information here saying would you like to save the password, would you like to know more about uh, why you've uh, got to unlock this drive. But if I just click unlock and go to Explorer, we'll see that this is a drive just like any other kind of drive. And if I go to the drive, uh, you can see I've got a removable disk that's full of pictures just as it was before. Well that's all very good for Windows 7, but I can hear you wondering already what happens if I'm running an older operating system. So I happen to have on this machine Windows XP mode, and if I start Windows XP mode, and again we're going to cheat slightly with the video editing here so that you don't have to watch the uh, virtual machine go completely through its startup process. In uh, the new version of Virtual PC, I can connect uh, a USB drive, and that's just what I'm going to do here. Uh, it'll take XP a few seconds to sort out the drivers, and we're going to speed that up for you as well. But now you can see we've found the new hardware, and let's go and have a look at that in XP's Explorer. So here's Explorer. You can see the disk has got a special icon. Let's open it up and you see that we've got something saying BitLocker to go reader and we can get some more information about that or I can just go and type my password in straight away and we'll see the reader that comes up so obviously it's one way it's read but not write 
But when the reader comes up, it's not ordinary explorer, it's a reader, and we can just drag and drop the files that we need out of that uh, encrypted drive and store them somewhere, for example, on our desktop. And then we can work with them in the normal way. So we've seen encryption and we've seen down-level operating system access. The last thing you might wonder is, what happens if I forget my password? And that's where key recovery comes in, which is why we needed Active Directory. So if we get to enter the password and we say, ah, we've forgotten the password, we can go and retrieve it, either from a file or from another storage device. So let's go and find the file. And here's the files that I saved when I've been creating my uh, BitLocker keys. And you can see there's a GUID that identifies it. We've got both a short and a long form of that GUID and then a 48-digit key. Uh, that's the recovery key to type in. And obviously, at that length, you won't want to retype that too often. Uh, if you need the long form of the GUID, you can see it just here. So that's key recovery.